Hi, welcome to Super Psychology, and here we're going to take a look at what 16 mark questions could there be? So this is a question that gets asked over and over again in the A-level, and I'm just going to go through kind of what 16 mark questions are and how to figure out in the exam what potential 16 markers there might be. So what do we mean when we say a 16 mark question in the psychology A level? A 16 mark question is the maximum mark for a standalone question that you should get. And it can come in two different forms. It could come in the straightforward describe and evaluate something or discuss something. Now that's a question that's just six marks for AO1, that's the description, and 10 marks for AO3, that's the evaluation. There's also another form of 16 mark question that has historically been more difficult for students to engage with which is what we might call the stem 16 marker because this has got AO2 in it so in this particular 16 mark question you might be asked to describe and evaluate X but refer to X in your answer and what I mean by that and you'll have seen these questions before is you've got a little bit of context a little bit of a scenario that's set up for you now in these questions the AO1 is the same as in a standard 16 marker whereas the AO2 is worth four now and and those marks come off the AO3. I think that's very important to mention because lots of students think that in that kind of 16 marker, so the 16 marker with AO2, that you write less AO1. That's not actually true. You write less AO3. So I always advise my students in a STEM 16 marker basically to cut off one of the evaluation paragraphs and use that time for the AO2. What you mustn't do is use your time from the AO1. Now, in terms of how many 16 mark questions could there be, and students always say this, Miss, how many 16 mark questions will there be in paper one? It's like, well, there could be four, because you could have a 16 mark question in every single section, because every section on paper one is out of 24 marks. So there could be one for each topic. For paper two, it could, in theory, be a max of two, because you've got approaches and biopsych. You don't have 16 mark questions in research methods. The maximum mark there is going to be 12. And in paper three, you could, in theory, have four. Now, it's unlikely, but that's not to say that it's not a possibility. What I want to look at now is how to figure out what could be 16 mark questions. And again, this relates to what lots of students say about, well, how do we even know what the potential 16 mark questions should be? So in order to kind of get a sense of this, you have to download the specification. Now you download the specification. I've just put a little screenshot there of the AQA website. So if you go into Google and put AQA psychology, it will bring you to this page. And you basically want to click here on specification. And when you've clicked on specification, you'll click on the top, you can see their specification at a glance, and then you're going to download this document here where that second green arrow is pointing to. And when you're browsing the specification, just be really careful, especially when you're coming to revise for your A-level, that you scroll down to what is the A-level content. So you can see that's just on this bit here. That's particularly important with related to research method. The AS content for research method is different. The S content for biopsych and approaches is also different as well. Now I'm going to show you how to use this. I'll kind of take a look at an attachment as an exemplar just so you can get an understanding of what you have to do to figure out what 16 markers there might be. So this is the part of the document I was just talking about and I've clicked on attachment and it's brought me to the specification for attachment. So let's have a look what we've got here in terms of 16 markers. Now for the first bullet point, although it's one bullet point, it's actually hiding about three 16 markers. So we've got a potential 16 marker on caregiver infant interactions in humans that's reciprocity and interactional synchrony so there's one then we've got the stages of attachment as identified by Schaefer that could also be one because that's a big piece of research there on the Glasgow babies and then we've got multiple attachment and the role of the father so first bullet point you can see we've got three potential 16 markers in there right second bullet point we've got animal studies of attachment Lorenz and Harlow 
Now let's kind of think about this. There could be a 16 marker on animal studies of attachment there because it's plural and it'd have to use Lorenz and Harlow. In theory, there could be separate 16 markers on Lorenz and Harlow. In kind of what I would say is it's more likely to get Lorenz and Harlow though as eight markers. So I think realistically for that second bullet point, you're probably looking at one there, three if you're unlucky. Right, next bullet point, we've got explanations of attachment, learning theory and Bowlby's monotropic theory. So we've got two theories hiding in there, the learning theory and Bowlby's monotropic theory. So that's two potential 16 markers, one for each. There's also kind of likely to be a question on explanations, plural of attachment, and you have to do both. The concepts of a critical period and internal working model, those are just more likely to appear as kind of smaller knowledge based questions because those are embedded within Bowlby's theory. OK, what have we got next? So we've got aims with strain situation and the types of attachment. So that's an easy 16 marker there for strain situation. And don't forget, hiding here is the cultural variations in attachment, which could also be a 16 marker. So probably two there. And then we've got a couple here. So we've got Bowlby's theory of maternal deprivation. And yes, that is different from his monotropic theory. And then the Romanian orphan studies. So two there. And then finally, we've got the influence of early attachment on childhood and adult relationships. Now, that's likely to be one 16 marker. So childhood and adulthood. Uh, it could also be separate eight markers. So influence of early attachment on childhood, eight marks. Influence of early attachment on adult relationships there, eight marks. So you can see, if we kind of look across, we've kind of got three, then we've got one, two, two, one. So in terms of attachment, the total, you've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably about 11 potential 16 markers there in attachment. So hopefully you can see with that how I've just used the specification just to run through what are the key areas of study. Don't get fooled into thinking just because it's one bullet point on the spec that there's one 16 marker in there. Because like we've seen with that first one, there are actually three different ones hiding in there. I just want to focus on biopsych for a moment because biopsychology is slightly different when it comes to 16 markers for a couple of reasons. The first reason being is, I'm just going to kind of highlight these first three bullet points, so divisions of the nervous system, structure and function, neurons, and the function of the endocrine system. In those three, there is no evaluation. So you can't get asked a 16 mark question on the endocrine system, on the neurons, on the central nervous system. It's these four here where the 16 markers might happen. And a lot of people have questioned, oh, can you get a 16 marker on the fight or flight response? And the answer is yes, you can indeed. Now, in terms of how 16 markers appear for biopsychology, what we have seen historically is where they appear, they do tend to appear with a stem. That's to say the context questions. But that being said, in a lot of textbooks, there are a lot of example questions without a stem. But AQA have said that where you have biopsychology 16 markers, it's most likely to be with some context to them as well. I do hope you found that video useful and it gives you some insight into what you might need to revise for the exam. If you're thinking about where to go to next, I do have a video on how to answer 16 mark questions on this channel as well, should you find that useful. Goodbye.